Now, within that context, I want to share with you a great quote from a woman who I follow, and she is the uh, chief executive officer of the biggest publisher in the world, uh, Penguin Random House. And she says, bestsellers sell the best because they are bestsellers. I want you to think about that because it's not just a tautology. Uh, if you are Stephen King, or you are John Grisham, or you are Michelle Obama, and you create a new piece of work, by definition, because of your track record, because of the impact you're going to have on the community, you are going to get the most resources. You are going to get preferred digital and physical shelf space. What's more, when people read the work, they are going to talk about it. And what Madeleine McIntosh says, she said very interestingly, in these times, people crave things that they can trust. They crave things that they are familiar with. So what's the moral of the story? Very, very simple. Be the best seller in your category. So whatever you do, whatever role you play, be the best version of that in your category. So I know there are a range of functions on this call. About 50% of you may be customer facing, the other 50% are operationally driven. But whatever role you play, we're all serving the customer. As Peter Drucker said, he was a very famous management consultant, he said either you're serving the customer or you need to serve someone who's serving the customer. And some of the biggest breakthroughs that I've seen companies generate is when someone who's nowhere near the customer has an idea and then brings it to whoever the customer-facing person is. So one thing is for certain uh, that we can only fly while embracing each other. Right? We can only be great if each person sees it as their role to enhance your offering to customers. Now, all of this is happening in the context of COVID. And what is fascinating is that COVID is the great magnifier. So I don't care who you are on this call. You brought your own preconditions with you into COVID. And maybe some of those preconditions were physical, maybe they were mental, maybe they were emotional, maybe they were social, maybe they were financial. But COVID is really highlighting what's great and not so great about all of us. So if there is a shock that we've all been through, it's how much of the economy was shut down. You know, 80% of the economy was branded as non-essential. And so if you brand yourself as non-essential, then you're going to be going through what's called uh, post-pandemic stress disorder. And all of us on any given day will be going through PPSD. But if you're on this call, part of my job today and part of your job with each other is to convert PPSD into PPSG, which is post-pandemic self-growth. And really, this is where the work becomes. We all have to enhance our inner game, but we're only as good as the people around us. So that's the paradox, right? There's work we need to do internally, but ultimately, we become the people we surround ourselves with. And I've known Karen now. How long have we known each other, Karen? I think uh, our first session oh, uh, at Commonwealth was 12 years, probably. Yeah, about 12 years. So, and I just look at the uh, team of folks that you've built around you. So I want you to um, virtually look around the room and just look at the people around you and just ask yourself, are these the kind of people you want to be in a foxhole with? Are these the kind of people who you think have got your back? And if you're answering yes, then just know you're one of the fortunate ones and that they are going to be there for you and you're going to be there for them. So, let me now <clears throat> build on some of the comments that uh, Karen made. And um, this is a fascinating study that was just completed uh, in February of this year by LinkedIn, where they surveyed 100,000 learning and development professionals around the world, and they asked them which skills were most important in terms of thriving in this environment. And the very top skill, is what they branded as resilience and adaptability, opposite sides of the same coin. And again, if you're taking notes, just know I'm, I'm, I'm going to get all these slides to uh, Karen and Jennifer, so you're welcome to take notes, but I'm also going get, to get the slides to you. So resilience is not take a licking and keep on ticking. Resilience means that you can take what's coming at you and overcome inertia and somehow keep moving forward by adapting. So 
you know, this side is resilience, that side is adaptability. They're like Siamese twins joined at the hip. Number two, technology skills and digital fluency. Now, this doesn't mean all of a sudden you can write code. What it means is that you're leveraging all the tools at your disposal. And in terms of the work I'm doing, you know, there's some folks who tell me, well, I'm a face-to-face -face kind of person. Well, we call that a fixed mindset. All of us in, on this call need to have a growth mindset, and that is to fully embrace the technology that's available to us and to become digitally fluent in the way that we need to be. So just like you, I've had to master this medium. Uh, what I've learned to do over here is balance my uh, iPad with my TV monitor uh, and somehow make all of this work with the help of a lot of people. But that's how I'm endeavoring to, to demonstrate my digital fluency. Number three, communication across remote or distributed teams. So I know that collaboration and teamwork are core values of yours, and we need to find ways of doing that remotely. And if there's one thing COVID has done, it's eliminated geography as a factor. Now we can serve anyone, anywhere, anyhow. So learning how to communicate through this medium, learning how to span whatever the geographical distances are, and learning how to motivate the range of teams that you have to work with is going to be crucial. And I want to go back to the comment I made at the very start of the session. You want to be the one who takes responsibility for bringing everyone together. Uh, I have a mentor who gave me this great advice. He said, Michael, the most important trip you will ever make is to meet the other person more than halfway. So don't wait for them to come to you. You continually go to them. Number four, emotional intelligence. And that's just the ability to handle high intensity or conflict situations, to demonstrate empathy, to really have the other person believe that you understand where they're coming from. You don't have to agree with them. But the other person must always understand or believe that you at least get where they're coming from. Uh, the next one is cross-functional collaboration. So there's a reason why we're all on this call, and that is really cross-functionally bringing maximum value to the customer and making sure that not only are you ahead of the competition, but that you endeavor to redefine the game, which is what you are doing right now. Then the next two is leading through change and then managing change. So it's one thing to be on the front end of change, but then you want the people coming up behind you who can actually manage that. So some of you, just like me, may see yourself as pioneers and trailblazers, and others of you might be administrators or might be far better at maintaining what has been achieved. And this is where you want to do what you do best and complement others doing what they do best. Number eight, dealing with stress, being more mindful. You know, it's interesting, uh, just yesterday I had a call with someone and they were sharing with me how many people on the call leaders are becoming a little abrupt, a little curt, and really demonstrating either their impatience or their intolerance. Now, it's bad enough when you face to face and you act like that one on one. But when you try and do that on a virtual call, it really does brand you as someone who's out of touch. So I would just ask you that when you are tempted to act like that, just observe yourself as though you know, there's another person watching you. And then just ask yourself, uh, how will I feel about myself afterwards if I act like that now? And there are many moments where I have been tempted uh, and I've almost lost control. In fact, there might be moments where I have and then I act in a way, and then afterwards I look back and I go, oh my God, I wish I wouldn't have done that. And I'll tell you what Jeff Bezos says. He says, you want to practice uh, regret minimization in advance. So just when you're tempted to behave in a way that you know does not represent the best part of you, just think about how you're going to feel in an hour's time or in a day's time when you're looking back. And then don't behave like that. <laughs> okay, number nine. Time management. All right, this is, this is the big issue, and uh, this is a paradox, right? Because theoretically, we should have a lot more time. I mean, you know, we're not doing the commute, we're not doing the flying, and yet there's something called Parkinson's Law. 
Parkinson's law says the task expands to fill the time available for the task. So we start to conjure up a whole range of minutia or a whole range of things to fill the time. So this really is about uh, maximizing your time management and included in this, and we're going to talk about this, is replenishment and primary care and self-care. And then finally, uh, creativity. Uh, and really, I think uh, you have uh, exemplified that uh, in the first six months of this year. But it really is about innovation, about thinking different. And it doesn't mean that it's innovation with a capital I, like inventing the new iPhone or creating the wheel. This, these are the small things that could make a big difference over time. And the one thing that I'm learning during COVID is there are no little things. Right? Every little thing makes a huge difference. You know, little things cumulatively lead to big breakthroughs. So, you know, I think as I've gone through this, you've probably empathized or identified with a lot of those points. And I'd like to just pause here for a moment before I get into what I call my guidelines for creating breakthrough and just, uh, uh, just get your comments or questions or observations, just anything that uh, comes to your mind right now that you think might be appropriate to share with the folks on this call.